Now I'm going to explain how we actually achieve that level of uh, coverage control and consistency. But first of all, let's um, start off with a brief, very brief history of line array systems. So back in the early days of line array, uh, we had one zone systems. And in fact, there's many systems that are driven just this way um, today. And that's where each cabinet is driven with the same signal. So the only way that you can affect the dispersion from the system and the coverage of it is by changing the, the height, the tilt angle, and the splay angles in between the cabinets. That's pretty crude, really. Um, <clears throat> I think we can do better than that in, in the 21st century. And in fact, at the start of the 21st century, we um, <clears throat> designed the W8L. And this was our first foray into large format line array products. And we also pioneered the use of band zoning, as, as we termed it, which is where you chop the array up into short, medium, and long throw sections so you can EQ them differently. So you can actually try and balance the SPL from front to back. You can deal with air absorption losses over distance, all those kind of things. And we ended up with uh, three zones for the, for the system. And we did some experiments where we had double the number of zones. And we got more and more consistent results from the front to the back. So that led us to think, OK, well, if we had even more zones, uh, how could we get it? Could, could, how could, good could we get it? But the thing is, we were still configuring them manually. We had some basic presets to start you off, but there was still an awful lot of measurement required with microphones around the venue. It was taking time. It was inconsistent from day to day. So we realized if we wanted to have more zones within the array, then we had to change our way of thinking about how to configure them. And so here we have the multicellular array uh, that we pioneered with the MLA system, where each acoustic cell has got its own amplifier and DSP channel. Fantastic. There's loads of um, fine granularity there, but how on earth are we going to configure all those DSP channels to do something useful for us? And how are we going to um, configure that um, <clears throat> in the same way night after night? Certainly a human can't do this. There's not enough hours in the day, and I'd certainly get bored way before I'd finish configuring an array with that many DSP channels. So of course the obvious answer is to get the computer to do it for us. But the problem with that is that it needs to give you the right answer. So that means that your acoustic model has got to be very, very accurate. And when we set about designing the MLA system, we set ourselves a goal of plus or minus 1 dB from uh, the predicted to the measured um, loudspeaker system. We did an AS paper about three years ago, which, um, which confirmed that we were able to achieve those results and gave at least some idea of, uh, of how. But the main thing that we found when we were looking at how to model uh, closely coupled arrays like line array systems is that the adjacent cabinets in an array have such a huge effect um, on, on each other. And it's purely the physical presence. They don't even have to be switched on. They just need to be physically placed next to the energized loudspeaker in order for um, the properties of the array, the output from it, to change quite considerably. So the way we quantified that is using an acoustic technique called the boundary element method. And that relies on putting a, a mesh of analysis points uh, around the surface of the loudspeaker and then solving many thousands of calculations offline back in the lab in order to um, <clears throat> figure out the dispersion of sound from that loudspeaker at any point in space. And you see what we've done here is we've taken an MLA mid-range horn, we've sliced it in half, and then we've put this, this mesh um, <clears throat> around it and analyzed the, uh, the output from that system. And we've put this surface right in front of it and we've plotted sound pressure level on the surface um, so that we can see what's happening right in front of the loudspeaker. And unsurprisingly, if that's the axis of our mid-range arm po pointing out like so, we've got this red spot, which is um, <clears throat> the hottest output right in front of it, which gradually peters out um, above and below. As you would expect, there's, there's no news there. But then you go and look at this plot on the right. And what we've done here is taken another um, number of MLA mid-range horns, one above and then four below the energized one. And this analysis, it's only the one second from the top that switched on. All the rest are just physically there. Then we go and put a mesh of points over that whole surface, describing all of those um, horns in that array. And then we go and energize just that one mid-range horn redo the analysis, and then plot the results on the same surface right in front of the array. And we now see the results are completely different. We've got sound poking out in directions that it wasn't before, and we've got a whole um, increase in level due to the baffling effect of the loudspeakers. And so we've changed the amplitude response, we've changed the directivity response, and we, in fact, we've changed the phase response 
of the output from that loudspeaker. And the only thing that we've had to do in order to, to fundamentally affect all those three properties of a sound wave is just put some speakers next to it. They're not even switched on. And if you don't take this effect into account in your, um, <clears throat> in your modeling data, then your acoustic model can be out by easily 8 dB. And I'm sure you'd agree that if our computer um, analysis was giving you results that were 8 dB from what you're really measuring, then you would think that the whole idea didn't work. So this is perhaps where most of the time was spent within the, um, the origination of the MLA technology, the MLA idea, is getting this uh, very accurate acoustic model. Uh, that was what everything else um, ended up being built upon.